This week in engineering, President Biden hits the ground running, IC shortages cripple the auto industry worldwide, and Microsoft steps up in self-driving technology. Today's episode is brought to you by engineering.com, a globally trusted source for engineering content. Check out this and many other exclusive videos for the engineering professional found only on engineering.tv today. COVID-19 has caused the most serious downturn in global auto sales since the Great Recession, but now there's a new headwind for automakers worldwide, a shortage of integrated circuits. Now, ICs have proliferated in modern automobiles with some models containing up to 150 chips, and multiple automakers have begun shutdowns due to the supply crunch. Ford is the most recent, halting production at the firm's German Saarland assembly plant currently making the Focus model. The plant employs 5,000 and will be idled for a month. Now, this move follows a similar shutdown of a Ford SUV operation in Louisville, Kentucky. According to CNN Business, Volkswagen, Fiat Chrysler, Toyota, Nissan, and Honda have all reported chip shortages, while Hyundai, GM, BMW, and Daimler-Benz are reportedly studying the problem closely. The cause for the supply disruption is a shift in output from automotive chips to smartphone and personal computing device ICs as their demand has remained steady during COVID-19 while auto production has dropped. Further complicating the supply chain is a series of recent Trump administration rulings about technology transfer to China in areas where technology could be considered dual use. Now, the new Biden administration has not yet stated what changes, if any, they intend to make to rules regarding tech transfer to China. However, Biden's platform includes measures designed to increase the proportion of US-made components in all goods labeled as American-made. With integrated circuit manufacturing approximately split between Asia and the US by production volume, it may be necessary for the major semiconductor houses to split operations into Washington-compliant and non-US production lines, which may delay the introduction of new foundries that are needed for auto production, smart devices, and the major demand from the 5G wireless market. We'll understand more about the resiliency of the IC industry in the second half of the year, when COVID-19 is expected to be under control in both chip-producing and chip-consuming nations. Newly inaugurated President Joe Biden spent his first day in office by signing a flurry of executive orders, 17 in all. Now, two of the orders have direct implications for the engineering sector in the U.S. The first is the cancellation of the Keystone XL pipeline project intended to bring Canadian oil from the province of Alberta into the U.S. distribution network for transport to U.S. refineries. The decision was expected, as opposition by environmental groups to the pipeline program has been consistent throughout the Trump presidency. Now, the economic impact will be minimal in the current COVID-dominated economic environment, although the expected Biden ban on fracking and likely prohibitions on further exploration in environmentally sensitive U.S. areas may have implications for American self-sufficiency and petroleum for the future. Geopolitically, there may be a knock-on effect. It's widely expected that the Canadian government will react by piping crude over the Rockies to West Coast ports for shipment to the Asian market, primarily China. Canadian oil traditionally sells at a discount to global benchmark prices, so a shift to Asian exports could have pricing implications worldwide. The other significant executive action was Biden's order to rejoin the Paris Climate Accords. With CO2 emissions down due to COVID-19, short-term implications are minimal, but the aggressive Paris targets will require a significant shift away from fossil fuel consumption and quickly to remain in compliance. If the European model is a guide, the Biden administration can be expected to use grants, subsidies, and possibly a carbon tax to accelerate the shift from oil and gas in the transportation and energy generation sectors. With democratic control of both the House and the Senate for at least two years, quick action is possible. Whether the U.S. industry can deliver the critical photovoltaic, wind, hydroelectric, and battery storage technology in volume remains to be seen. We'll keep you appraised of developments. Full self-driving, or more accurately, SAE Level 5 capability, well, it's widely regarded as the holy grail of the automotive industry. It's widely expected to revolutionize transportation and fundamentally change ownership and usage patterns for private vehicles worldwide. While early optimism for a quick Level 5 solution, well, that's been tempered by new analyses that suggest that Level 4 or 3 is a more realistic goal, companies such as Waymo and Cruise are testing driverless vehicles in passenger-carrying operations in the suburbs of Phoenix and in San Francisco. Tesla, of course, is beta testing new versions of their autopilot system with their customer base, and several automakers now offer similar driver assistance systems. It's widely expected that the way forward will be industry consortiums that combine major automakers with software and sensor developers, similar to the way Apple and Android operating systems split the smartphone industry. In a major move in this direction, Microsoft has announced that the firm is joining General Motors and Honda as part of the Cruise self-driving program. 
the $2 billion investment brings the market value of Cruise to approximately $30 billion. Now, Microsoft, described by Cruise as a force multiplier, brings their Azure cloud and edge computing platform to the table, which Cruise describes as essential for commercializing autonomous vehicle systems at scale. Microsoft will use the collaboration to optimize the Azure platform for transportation industry customers worldwide. Cloud connectivity for Cruise is different from Tesla's approach, which aggregates user camera data to improve self-driving algorithms. Cruise and Alphabet's Waymo, though they use LiDAR and extensive mapping to navigate geofenced areas. Well, this suggests that Cruise is preparing for commercialization of their technology in the near future. The regulatory environment under the new Biden administration is unknown at this time, but incorporation of level five systems into electric vehicles may spur regulatory action as part of Biden's environmental focus. It's a fast developing sector and we'll report more as it develops. This episode was brought to you by engineering.com. If you like this show, be sure to subscribe to our channel and click on the notification button for our next episode. For deeper engineering content, visit engineering.tv for exclusive shows not found on our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.